we are now more we are continuing with the chapter of uh, telecommunications and networking and to the best of my knowledge the last topic that we finished was virtual private network that was different types of telecommunication network based on ownership am i right right or wrong okay we are now moving to the next topic we are now moving to the next topic and that is called as network topologies we are moving to the next topic that is called as network topologies now to begin with what is a topology what do we understand by the term topology topology refers to the physical arrangement of computers topology refers to the physical arrangement of computers in a local area network now whenever you are watching a cricket match you see mr dhoni captain of the cricket team he is he is marshaling his resources means uh, suppose there is a swing bowler then he will keep uh, three slips then one point a gully at cover one fine leg deep square leg so this is what we are making the arrangement we are arranging the fielders suppose the bowler is a, a slow bowler or he is a spin bowler then maybe slip is not required the uh, the field is spread out so he is saying to it that at what position what fielder is standing in the same way whenever we are placing the computers in a specific way so that they can be interconnected with each other that is referred to as topology so topology is the physical arrangement of what obviously of computers what more we have to arrange of computers so that Uh, inside inside a local area network now there are different types of topologies every topology having its own advantage and disadvantage let's start with the very first topology who will be having more of disadvantages and less of advantages right so when we understand the disadvantage of a particular topology a new topology comes up so that it can remove all the deficiencies of the previous one it is said in hindi avashyakta hi avishkar ki janani hai it means necessity is the mother of invention in the same way bus topology came up it was working fine there were some problems so new type of topology came up now every topology have its own advantages and disadvantages now any organization who feel that one particular topology's advantages are more than the disadvantages for them obviously they will be installing that particular topology no matter if the disadvantages are more for some another organization so let's start with the very first type of topology and that is called as network topology in a network topology you have a cable you will be having a cable now this particular cable is very very important cable it's like the highway a very important road right and this is called as technically it is called as the central trunk it is called as central trunk it is the backbone of the network and all the nodes will be connected to this specific trunk using a connector called as t connector it is also called as bnc it refers to british naval connector now what exactly is this a understanding t connector is not difficult you must be knowing a profession called as plumbing 
okay they use such type of t connectors like for example your chennai this place or this metropolitan city might be having a very very big water tank and from that water tank a pipe comes down and it is below the road and those societies those apartments who are residing or who are constructed along that road roadside what they do is they cut the pipe and they put a t so what happens when a t is installed the line is re established and one line in our society so our society will be having the water connection obviously this is legal and it has to be done only after the permission from the corporation same will be done by some another society same will be done by all the societies so how do they get connected to the main line with the help of t connectors same thing will be happening over here okay one particular computer will be connected using a t connector then another one that's may be called as node 1 then we have node 2 then we have node 3 we have node 4 and one more node 5 and one more node 6 getting it now this particular type of a topology will not be having a dedicated server i mean to say you need not buy a bigger system a mini you need not buy a mini computer which is bigger in size having more memory having more storage space having a faster processor you need not buy what you can do is one of your nodes you can convert it into server so the architecture of this computer and the architecture of all the other computers will be almost same okay same processing power same storage capacity everything will be same but we will just create one server we are not buying the server we are just creating one of the nodes or we are converting one of the nodes as server for just controlling the traffic that's it now this is how all the components are connected with each other now how the data transmission will take place in a bus topology data transmission takes place through the server say for example now n5 wants some data so n5 obviously will be requesting the server because server is supposed to serve everyone nah? so the data will go to the server now suppose this data is not available with not available with the server anyways it is named as server it is not necessary that all the data should reside centrally in the server so this server is searching for information it goes to n1 it goes to n1 and it will try to find the information suppose it is not finding it it goes to n2 it is not finding goes to n3 it doesn't find it goes to n4 it will not find it it will go to n5 and if the request was generated there only then what is the point in doing that suppose raj is asking me one doubt okay okay i'll clarify your doubt and i am saying asking the same doubt to him tell me what is the answer it makes no sense so it goes to suppose n6 now n6 is having the answer okay now common sense says that transfer the data in this way right but everything has to pass through the server so it will go this way to server and then from server it will come to node 5 understanding so don't you think unnecessarily there is the transferring of data okay this is we can say one of the drawbacks of bus topology but let's talk first about the advantage very simple installation one line is required to be maintained and you can go on adding nodes to it obviously go on adding nodes to it means it depends upon the capacity of the server okay so there, is, there are some limitations and it, it depends upon the capacity of the server then data transmission is fast even though it is repeated but it is faster adding a node and removing a node is very simple in bus topology just you have to put a d connector add the node connect it to the server get ip address it is done if you want to remove it just remove it finish adding and removing a node is very simple then um, diagnosing the fault is also simple in a bus topology suppose there is a cut over here it is quite obvious ki n5 and n6 won't work okay if there is a cut over here then n3 n4 n5 n6 won't work 
So when your four computers are not working, you will easily come to know that this particular area is having certain problem. Now the major disadvantage is the way it is communicating and if there is some problem in the central conductor itself, then entire network has to stop working. Entire network will come to stand and still. And that is nothing but the first type of topology that is called as network topology. After this network topology, we are moving to the next one and that is called as ring topology. It is called as ring topology. Now what is this ring topology? In a ring topology, a server, obviously here we have a dedicated server. A server is connected to all the nodes to form a loop. Here, computers will be connected with each other to form a loop or to form a circuit. Means what? Here, we are having a server. Here we have say node 1, then we have node 2 and we have node 3, also we have node 4. So how the connections will be made? Here the server will be connected directly to the node 1, node 1 is connected to node 2, node 2 is connected to node 3, node 3 to node 4 and again node 4 to the server. So we are creating a closed loop. We are creating a circuit, right? Now, in this particular type of ring topology, the server need not know the address of everyone. Every node need not know the address of everyone. Here, every node or the server just knows the address of its adjacent nodes. Means the server will be knowing the address of N1 and N4. N1 will be knowing here there is server, here there is N2. N2 will be knowing here there is N1, here there is N3. N3 will be knowing here there is N2, here there is N4. And N4 will be knowing here there is N3 and here there is server. So each and every node along with the server knows the address of its adjacent nodes. That's it. Server doesn't know where N3 is. It just know where is N1, where is N4. Now how the data will be transferred then? Data is transferred in ring topology using a concept of token passing method. Here data is passed in the form of packets, data packets and a token will be attached to that particular packet. Now suppose server wants to transfer data to N3. So server will put the tag of N3 and it will send the data. It send the data means it, it can send data only to N1. So it is sending the data to N1. Now as soon as the packet comes at uh, N1, N1 becomes very happy. Oh packet came, packet came, packet came. It goes and lifts that packet and it sees that there is the tag of N3 and so it is very sad. It is not his packet. If it is not your packet, you are supposed to send it further. Sending it further means N1 will be sending this particular packet to N2. Now N2 becomes very happy. Packet aya, packet aya, packet aya. Then it, open, then it sees that packet, but, but he is sad to see that it is having a tag of N3. So if it is not your packet, you are supposed to send it further. <coughs> Same packet goes to N3 now. Now N3 is happy to receive the packet. It shouts packet aya, packet aya, packet aya. Then it goes and lifts the packet. It is surprised to see that it is having the same tag N3. It is double happy. Mera packet aya, mera packet aya, mera packet aya. It opens the packet and that's how the data is being transmitted from the server to the node 3. Now I am talking about a unidirectional ring topology. A ring topology could be bidirectional also. So this method of transferring the data is called as token passing method. <coughs> it is called as token passing method. 
So this is how this topology is working. Now what are the advant what are the advantages? We have removed this problem unnecessary. Everything was going through the server. Now that has been solved over here. So the data transfer in the ring topology would be faster as compared to the bus topology. Okay, but the problem is if there is any problem in this circuit. Suppose there is a cut over here. The entire network will come to stand and still because the circuit is broken. Okay. Because the circuit is broken, right? Then one more problem is adding a node and removing a node is also a problem. It's not like you just have a T connector, join a node and it starts working. No, if you are, if you want to add a node over here, then this entire remaining nodes have to be reconfigured. Suppose you are adding a node over here, but the N1 is knowing the address of only N2, then there is a problem. Okay, now this becomes N2, this is N3, this is N4, this is N5. Suppose you are removing N3, or N2 will be knowing only N3, na? if that is only removed, then the data is stuck over here. So again, this N4 is required to be reconfigured. So every time, whenever you are adding or subtract, adding or removing any node, you are required to what? Reconfigure the network. That is one problem of ring topology. Okay, and if a particular node is not working, how will it come to know that which node is not working? Because the entire network will not work. So it has to try different permutation combination. It will remove N1, reconnect the entire thing and we'll check. So let, let's, let's assume ki N3 is not working. How will we find out? We will remove N1. Okay, we will reconnect everything and check whether the network is working. It won't work because N3 is not working. We will reinstall this N1, we will remove N2, reconnect and check. It will work? No. Why? N3 is not working. Now, we will reinstall N2, we will remove N3, reconnect and check. Will it work? Yes. That means N3 is not working. Okay. Now, just imagine if two nodes are working, uh, are not working together. Both the nodes are not working. Then it will be a very heavy job for the engineers. Checking all the permutation combination, N1, N2, N1, N3, N1, N4. Now suppose there were 25 nodes connected to this ring topology, just think how much permutation combinations you are required to do. And that is the problem of ring topology. So once you know the problem of ring topology, we are now moving to the next one and that is called as star topology. Next topology is called as star topology. Now in a star topology, all the nodes, now there will be one server, there is no doubt about it. And all the nodes will be connected directly to the server. All the nodes will be connected directly to the server. And we have discussed this. When I started the topic of computer networks, we had started with the same diagram. The server is a central computer with more processing, blah, blah, blah. All these I have said. Now I'm saying this maybe for the 10th time now. And all the nodes are connected directly to the server. So the greatest advantage is you need not use any common means. Okay, here central tank common required, now it is not required, circuit was required, now that is not required. Here each and every node is having its own separate connection with the server. So you can know it very well that this is obviously faster type of communication. That is the advantage. Now uh, the disadvantage is this requires the cost it is uh, the cost involved in this is more. Why? Obviously, because you are requiring a separate channel for each and every node. And the working of this nodes, uh, working of this node, I have discussed two times. One while teaching you the concept of networking, and second time while teaching you client-server method. Okay, that was one type of a networking. Same is been applied over here. That is called as a star topology. Now, suppose if there is a cut over here. So it is quite obvious your N1 won't work because it is out of the system. And major disadvantage is suppose if the server is not working, 
anyways the entire network will come to stand and still so we are having the next type of network and that is called as mesh topology we are having something called as mesh topology now mesh topology means all the computers will be connected to all other computers all computers will be connected to all other computers <coughs> what exactly it means we have a one computer over here one over here one over here one over here and one over here okay let's call them as p1 p2 P3, P4, and P5. So P1 will be connected to P2, will be connected to P3, connected to P4, connected to P5. P2 will be connected to P1, P3, P4, and P5. P3 will be connected to P1, P2, P4. P5. P4 will be connected to P1, P2, P3, and P5. And P5 is connected to P1, 2, 3, 4. Hey, don't you think this is mesh topology? I am sorry. Don't you think this is peer to peer networking? <laughs> when we are talking in terms of technology, this is peer to peer technology. And when the same thing we from the point of view of topology, it is called as mesh topology. And you know about this. There is no dedicated server. It is depending situation wise, depending upon the situation, one particular peer will be becoming the server, another become client. Okay, and the advantage is, see all computers are connected to all other computers. So if this is not working, it is not like P5 is not connected to P1. It is having three alternative path. This, this, and this. So this is called as connecting to a specific node by hops. This is called as hopping, jumping in, in a regular terms. So these are the four different topologies of what? Networking. Burst topology, ring topology, star topology and mesh topology. Now, these are all old topologies, actually speaking, out of syllabus. Out of syllabus means it's not in, uh, it's not working now. Now we are having some hybrid topologies. Star and ring will be combined, bus and ring will be combined, all such type of topologies we have. But those advanced topologies is not there in your syllabus. So there is no point discussing all these things, right? So is this concept very clear? That was first topic for today called as different, different network topologies, okay? So you copy this down and in the meantime, we will welcome our late comers.
finished. We are continuing <coughs> with the next topic that is called as uh, transmission technologies. Transmission technologies refer to how the data will be transferred through a specific communication channel. Though we have seen various communication channels. Have we seen or not? I am talking specifically about wired communication. <coughs> We have seen how <coughs> various communication channels are present. Now we are seeing how the data will be transmitted between these channels. We will be seeing different aspects of transmission. And depending upon these different aspects, we have different types of transmission technologies. We will be seeing how the data will be transferred based on number of bits it is sending at a given point of time. That means how much data can be transferred at a given point of time. We will also see different types based on the synchronization between a transmitter and a receptor. Between a transmitter and a receptor. <coughs> see, if the lecturer is very bad and if students are very good, they won't be able to connect. Because whatever is been taught, they are not able to understand anything. Yes? <coughs> the second way round is the lecturer is very good and students are not at all interested then also then also they won't be able to connect the lecturer is not he is not having the knowledge he is not able to teach students are not interested in teaching are not interested in learning superb <coughs> the last thing is very important okay the teacher lecturer is teaching the things in an appropriate manner. Students are interested, they are listening and they are ready to grasp everything. Only in this particular option, there is a right synchronization between the sender and the receiver. That is the transmitter and the receptor. So this is the best combination for transmission of the data. So based on the synchronization, between the transmitter and receptor, we will be having different types of transmission technologies. And last is, the direction of data transfer determines what type of technologies we can have. Okay, So we are starting off with the very first one. And that is based on the number of bytes that are being sent. Okay, so now listen, we are discussing about, we are discussing about data transmission technology and the first bifurcation is on the number of bits that is being transferred. So based on number of bits that is being transferred, we have two different types of transmission technology. One is called as serial transmission and the other one is called as parallel transmission. Now in a serial transmission, there will be one single line of communication and one single bit will be transferred. Only one bit will be transferred. This is called as serial transmission. The internet connection line that you are getting, that you connect it to your computer or to your desktop or laptop, that is nothing but serial transmission one bit at a time it could come fast no doubt about it but at a given point of time only one bit is been received that is called as serial 
transmission technology. The other one is called as parallel transmission. In a parallel transmission, you will be able to transmit 8 bits at a time. That means it will be having 8 channels. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And every line is able to transmit one bit at a time. This particular type of transmission will be called as a parallel data transmission or it is called as the parallel transmission of data. So this is normally used when you are transferring data to the printer and you can see it very well that uh, <coughs> data, uh, uh, the wire which is carrying data, data cable okay it is this big or this the width is very big okay so it is able to transmit eight bits at a time that is called as a parallel and transferring eight bits at a time is nothing but transferring one entire byte at a given point of time and i need not tell you eight bits come together to form one byte okay this is the first type of data transmission technology based on number of bits that is being transferred Next is called as synchronization between the transmitter and the receptor. And we have again two, two types in this that is called as synchronous transmission of data and asynchronous type of data transmission. Now what is synchronous and what is asynchronous? Now I will give you an example to understand what is asynchronous. Suppose Mr. Uh, Ram Prakash is typing a letter he is typing a letter on computer right and this is not an official letter okay it is unofficial letter and whenever you are typing some unofficial letter you are required to give a deep thinking you have to think about the right words with right meaning and you have to place them in a correct manner then only you'll be having the impact otherwise it will be useless ram prakash understands it better now listen ram prakash starts typing and the first line is very simple, dear and whatever is the name, pet name. Now that will be very fast, hey, shh. that will be very fast. The process, how the processor will come to know that Ram Prakash has started typing. Whenever Ram Prakash starts typing, bit 0 is generated, 0 is the start bit, okay. Suppose data has been transmitted in this way from the keyboard to the processor. So first bit 0 will be generated. It indicates typing has started. Now whatever he is typing obviously it will go inside in the form of binary digits. Okay, That is say 110101 then it would be 111100 and so on and when he stops typing bit 1 will be generated it indicates the processor that typing has stopped then Ram Prakash is thinking about something some good words processor is also relaxing let him think then he gets some beautiful lines he starts typing again bit 0 will be generated, some data will be punched in and when he stops bit 1 is generated and this is nothing but the start and stop method of data transmission, intermittent method of data transmission where the transmission is not having any pattern. It can start any point of time, it can stop any point of time because it is all depending upon mind na? and human mind is different for different persons. Every mind is different in every sense. Such type of data transmission where there is no pattern of punching data or transmission is nothing but what? Asynchronous.
That is called as asynchronous method of data transmission. After this asynchronous method of data transmission, we are moving to the next one that is called as synchronous type of data transmission. Suppose you are transferring one file from your pen drive to your laptop or maybe your desktop and you give the command of copying. Okay, that data goes very smooth. Okay, the data transmission speed remains the same. There is no starting and stopping. <coughs> Once the data starts flowing, it will follow the same pattern 4 MB per second, 20 MB, depend, depends upon what type of transmission you are using. But it is same. If you see the progress bar, it moves smoothly. 5, 10, 15, 20, 50, 60, 70, 80, 95 and then it is going very smooth. It is not stopping and starting. Such type of data transmission is called as synchronous where there is a specific pattern. Okay, It starts once, it stops only once and that is nothing but what? Synchronous method of data transmission. So these are the two different types of methods, synchronous and asynchronous. If we consider a feature that is synchronization between the transmitter and the receiver. And the last one is depending upon the direction. Now depending upon the direction, again, we have three types. The first one is called as simplex connection. First one is called as simplex connection. Simplex connection refers to that type of data transfer or data communication which is having only one direction. Data will be transferred in only one direction. Like for example, someone is typing. The data goes from the keyboard to the processor and that is the only one direction possible. Is the other way around possible? Processor is giving the data on the keyboard and keys are automatically pushed up and down. Is it, have you, have you ever seen such thing? Now, whenever you are taking a printout, the data always travels from the processor to the printer. Is the other way around possible? Putting a printout inside the printer, data goes to the processor and from the other side, you are getting a blank paper. It doesn't happen. So here, data is transmitted only and only in one direction. That is called as simplex connection. Then the next one is called as half duplex connection or semi duplex connection. Here, both ways the data can be transferred. But at a given point of time, only one direction is active. You cannot have both the directions active. The best example is walkie-talkie, okay? <clears throat> Two different individuals will be having the walkie-talkie. They tune at the same frequency. When one is talking, the other has to shut his mouth up. He is talking, talking and then he says over. When he says over, he should not say anything after saying over. Over indicates that the other person can speak. Then he will start talking. When he finishes off, then he will say over. <coughs> when he says over, then he can talk. And this way, the communication is taking place. It is only one direction active. Either here or either here. If both will speak, then the connection might be disconnected. And that is called as walkie-talkie. Or, more importantly, it is called as the half-duplex connection. Semi-duplex connection. Third type is called as full duplex connection. In a full duplex connection, data can travel both the directions. And at a given point of time, all the directions, I mean to say both the directions are active. The best example is your cell phone. On cell phone, both are talking, both are listening. I don't know about listening, but both are talking. And many a times there is a fight over the cell phone. You keep quiet first, let me finish. And the other person, okay, okay, you talk. That is because both are talking at a given point of time. But my dear boys, whenever you are talking to your girlfriend, even though it is a full duplex connection, technically speaking, it is only a simplex connection because the data is coming only from one end. The other end data is not possible. Uh, the other direction is not possible. 
so that was nothing but the next topic called as transmission technologies are you understanding just draw this diagram if you want and then we will go to the next part that is called as network protocol serial parallel synchronous there is no diagram for asynchronous and there is no diagram for directions also <clears throat> Finished? Previous one, time out. Which diagram? Finished.
<coughs> we are now moving moving on and starting with the new topic that is called as network protocols it's also called as communication protocol transmission protocol so what exactly this particular protocol means now i would like to start this topic by giving you one example now listen very carefully we drive we are driving on the roads we drive two wheeler four wheelers three wheelers no not three wheelers two wheelers and four wheelers now whenever we are driving we follow certain rules and regulations i am sorry we are supposed to follow certain <laughs> rules and regulations like shh, please like driving from the left hand side overtaking from the right hand side checking out no entries one ways no u turns yes u turns okay all these things please no honking zone all these things we are supposed to follow and many a times we do follow do you know what is the reason for following all these rules and regulations some people might say sir it is for our safety accept it you are absolutely right some people will say to avoid the traffic congestions again you are absolutely right some people will say sir to avoid giving fines to traffic police you are very practical you are absolutely right but my conception about following the traffic rules is we are following the rules and regulations of those of the traffic because the road on which we are driving doesn't belongs to our appa <laughs> am i right or wrong it's a very practical approach that road doesn't belongs to my appa so i am following the rules and regulations if 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 say nanda kumar's appa has gifted him a very 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 big piece of land say 50 100 acre of one big plot is gifted to him it is just uh, besides a mountain and nanda kumar has constructed a bungalow at the last point just near the mountain so from the gate till the mountain there is a 5 6 km long road which is obviously a private road Now, do you think Nanda Kumar will be following rules and regulations of traffic over there? No. He can drive at any speed that he wants. It is his own responsibility. He can drive on the right hand side of the road. Who will stop him? He will keep honking while driving. Who will stop him? And if he feels, he'll put his car in the reverse direction. He will put a reverse gear and he will drive in this way. <laughs> practice of reverse driving you can do that no one can stop him no rules and regulations to be followed because the road belongs to right see moral of the story is we are following the rules and regulations because we are sharing the road the road on which we are driving is supposed to be shared with others okay in the same way whenever computers are getting connected to each other the communication lines which are actually connecting them transfer all the data okay and the nodes are actually sharing those telecommunication lines for transferring data and that's why these nodes obviously along with the server is required to follow certain rules and regulations and these rules and regulations are referred to as protocol network protocol transmission protocol communication protocol so what is network protocol it's a special set of rules and regulation and these rules and regulation governs the communication between computers now are you understanding 
देर आर टू डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ ट्रांसमिशन प्रोटोकॉल वन इज कॉल्ड एज टी सी पी आई पी एंड द अदर वन इज कॉल्ड एज ओ एस आई मॉडल ओपन सिस्टम इंटर कनेक्शन मॉडल वट इज द डिफरेंस टी सी पी आई पी प्रोटोकॉल विल बी यूज वेर विल बी यूज वेर कंप्यूटर्स आर कनेक्टिंग टू ईच अदर विद इन द नेटवर्क the data is not going outside the network or to some extent when similar type of networks are getting connected to each other there we can use a tcp ip similar network means similar architecture similar uh, topologies when the similar type of networks are connecting with each other we are using tcp ip but when two separate models separate topology separate architecture type of computer is getting connected to each other uh, separate different type of computers are getting connected to each other then tcp ip won't work there you require a open system interconnection that means a computer of any network will be able to connect to a computer of any other network to understand this better okay when you are driving in chennai you are following certain rules and regulations now that is bare minimum okay because you are driving within chennai and you know chennai very well suppose a person from chennai is driving in mumbai he won't have major problems because the rules and regulations are almost same so this is called a similar network but if you are driving with a international license in united states of america you will feel their rules and regulations are more still you will feel the rules and regulations are more over there why because that is a totally different type of network so when our network or a person from our particular rules and regulations is driving over there he has to follow certain more rules so when you are talking about tcp ip there are only five set of rules and when you are talking about a osi model there are seven set of rules these set of rules are often referred to as layers it is often refer, uh, is often referred to as layers and layers are one above the other so 1 2 3 4 5 and so on now the upper layers are connected or they are answerable to the user they are more concerned with the user and as you step down a layer below it a layer below it you are going nearer and nearer to the hardware that means the lower layers will be concerned more with hardware and the upper layers will be concerned more with the user so now we are trying to understand the tcp ip type of transmission protocol it stands for transmission control protocol internet protocol it is also called as transfer control protocol internet protocol this particular type of rules and regulation exist for those networks who are similar in nature or it is been used by those computers who belong to the same network it's all about how the data will be formatted how the data will be addressed how the data will be transmitted to the right destination how it will be routed it is not necessary that you have only one single road to reach the, to reach the destination okay there are n number of roads so which exactly road you will take and how will you route your data packets that has been decided that has been defined by tcp ip and how and how it is received at the destination all these definitions are given by tcp ip so let's start off with the very first layer and that is called as application layer see so the name itself is suggesting something application is that particular part of software which is used by end user so don't you think this application layer is a nearer to the user right or wrong this application layer finalizes the user interface user interface is nothing but how the user will see the data of a computer and that is there are different types of interfaces a graphical user interface is a very simple interface you need not worry about the things everything will be placed before you you just have to click and get the work done 
whereas the character based interface would be a bit difficult. So it is the application layer who decides the user interface. User interface means how the user will communicate with a computer. It is about the support service. Support service means there are various applications required by a user. Like emailing is one application, downloading is one application, playing online game is one application, communication online is one of the applications. So what application is required by the user? Okay, This rendering of service will be seen by the application layer. Now, when there are two applications, how the data is communicated between different applications? Again, that will be seen by a application layer. When the data is being transmitted, how the data is delivered to the destination computer? A destination computer means receiver. That is the end user. So, how the data reaches ultimately to the end user? Again, it is been defined by the application layer. And then, Obviously, it has to interact with the layer below it. So, application layer is communicating with the transport layer. See, every layer communicates with each other. They have to do that. So, application layer ultimately will be communicating with the next layer. The layer below it is called as transport layer. <coughs> now, what is this transport layer? Transport layer decides finalizes the data flow between host and not nodes. Host is server. How one server will talk with another server? These rules and regulations are defined by the transport layer. It also sets timeout. Now what is this timeout? This timeout concept, I'll explain you with the help of an example. It is very simple. Listen. It is decided, today is Sunday evening, it is decided that evening 6 o'clock, Janani and Mr. X will be meeting at a specific place. Okay? She is happy about it. <laughs> so they will be meeting. And I said, boys are always very innocent. Okay? <laughs> they will come at 5.50 and they will wait. Okay? And they will be having a big smile on their face thinking about the nearby future. <laughs> wow, they will roam around, they will have a very good time with each other. They will be having a big smile. 5.55, 6 o'clock, it will reach up to the years. <laughs> but due to some reason, Janani is not coming or Janani is late. 6.5, 6.10, 6.15, it is converted into frown. But no one will wait till 6.15. Immediately, they will pull out their cell phone. Jane, where are you? Are you coming or not? Then she will reply, coming, not coming, reaching in two minutes. I didn't got the cab, didn't got the rickshaw, didn't got the bus. Something like that. There was a breakdown of vehicle. Coming, Baba, coming. Hold on. <laughs> now, here with this example, I won't be able to explain you this concept. The same example, if we consider before 10, 15 years, when I was in my college days, if the same, first listen and <laughs> same concept, if I explain from my pers uh, from my time, then you will be able to understand this from my perspective. Okay, now personal experience, you can say no problem. <laughs> And what day you will be also doing the same thing. <laughs> okay. So it is decided that we will be meeting Saturday morning 10 o'clock. And, and we were not having interaction like you. Suppose it is decided that these two will be meeting. After the decision is final, after that also they will be communicating on their cell phone. SMSs, uh, then your uh, WhatsApp, communication is constantly on. But in those days, there were no cell phones. So once it is decided on Wednesday, okay, we are meeting on Saturday, then two, three days, that is Thursday, Friday, you have to dream about it. No communication was possible. No cell phones. Okay. Landline phone was there, but it was not. Landline 
phone was available but uh, it was not available with everyone like in society one person will be having a landline so what am i supposed to do call that person neighbor and tell her that call call miss so and so it doesn't look good na and uh, if it is not at all necessary we won't call okay 